What's happening everybody, it's Brendan, Dad Planet. Welcome back to the One Man Show. So I have a What's Sold on eBay video coming to you here in just a second. It's going to cover the week of sales that I did from June 15th through the 21st, 15 items that I sold that week. I sold 40 items in total. But before I get into it, I wanna run something by you that I saw at a Goodwill recently that I'm not really sure what to think about. So one of the local Goodwills, I walked into it and the cart pusher, who I believe is an employee, I've seen him there for a couple of months now. He could just be a volunteer, I'm not really sure. At any rate, he's pushing a cart out and he's checking on his phone a lot of the items that are coming out on the carts. Now, I don't know if he's running comparables or not, but he brings a cart out in particular of artwork and he's looking a specific piece of art up on his phone. I think he likes what he sees and he takes it up to the register and the general manager of the store rings him up on the spot. Now, is this a new policy for new hires at Goodwill? Are the employees now allowed to shop the goods that they are putting on the shelves? This would be an incredible perk to working at Goodwill, but I find that weird. I've never seen anything like that before. It's amazing if they can do that, but I would like to know your opinion on that because that strikes me as um, maybe a little bit of a conflict. I'm not really sure. At any rate, let me know what you think about that, but let's get into the bolos. All right, this week was a lot like last week. So just under 2,000 in gross, just over 1,200, just under 1,300 in net sales. This is the 15th through the 21st, obviously. Um, my selling cost at 30%. My average sale price down, it's usually around $60. So I was like a couple of big hitter sales away from kind of a more normal sales week, but 15 great bolos. I sold 40 items this week. Let's take a look at 15 of them. All right, I'm not much of a hunter, so I don't do the decoy game a whole lot, but I was at a garage sale and I thought I would take a chance on this because it was brand new and there were no sold comps on it, but decoys look like there's a pretty big market for it and some of them will sell for a very high dollar amount. So I stuck a price tag on this of $70 and that's what it sold for. Buyers, 102, 16, all in again. Only $10 for me at a garage sale. They were brand new. It was just open box. And in my description in this listing, I put that I was just going to ship it in this exact box. I wasn't going to use an additional box because I didn't want my customer to have to pay additional based on dimensions if I had to use a larger box size. It was no problem. I stuffed that thing full of bubble wrap because they could have been kind of delicate on the inside. Looks like everything worked out. I will take that sale. Keep your eye out for carry light decoys. I just, again, got lucky because this was brand new and on an open box, so I'll take it. I almost threw this hat out. When I was running the comps at the time, there weren't that many great sales on it. And so I was like, yeah, maybe I should just toss this and let it go. I'm glad I didn't. I listed it, I put $20 on it, and that's what it sold for in a relatively short amount of time. So this buyer is 3272 all in, and uh, I mean, maybe it cost me 30 cents and it only took five weeks to sell. So I'm extremely excited for that, and it stayed in Columbus. Very timely sale here. I did pay up for this pair of shoes. You saw me source this in one of my thrift run videos. I think I paid $20 for them and I sold them for 55. I had them listed for 65. I will take it. I wanted to move them before the holiday and that's exactly what happened. So this buyer is 64.25 all in. They are Sakani Kinvara 12s, the stars and stripes, the USA style, whatever you want to call it. Um, they sold in one month and I am happy that I'm not sitting on them for another year. And it, you know, you never know when something is going to sell, but I had a goal of getting these moved before the 4th of July holiday. And that is exactly what happened. So I will take this sale as well. When I'm at the bins, I'm very careful when I'm sourcing Converse, even though Converse is by the pound because their soles, the midsoles, the canvas shoes, they can be kind of heavy. So this was a little bit of a heavier shoe, this pink high top. The style number on this one is M9006. It is a bolo. Please keep your eye out for it. I feel like I gave a pretty good deal here at 2549 uh, and the buyer is 3836 all in. So at the bins, this is probably going to cost around three bucks or so because again, some Converse are a little bit heavier. So you have to watch, even though you're paying by the pound and generally that's cheaper than buying in the retail stores, you have to watch. Some shoes are really, really heavy. So, you know, a lot of, you'll see that with a lot of boots. Boots can be really, really heavy and some of them become cost prohibitive even at the bins. As it stands, the M9006 Pink Converse is a bolo. They sell relatively well, so I got lucky with this style. Keep your eye out for it, good seller. This shoe is a perfect example of a shoe that's on the heavier side. So this is gonna be about three to $4, even at the bins, because it's heavier. It's the Merrill Chameleon 5. 
Uh, I know I can get between 30 and $50 for this pre-owned. And so that's where they landed. I think I had them listed at $40 and they sold for 34. Uh, this buyer is 48, 48 all in. Again, you have to watch because these are the heavier shoes, but I knew I could get more than I could, or at least I suspected I could get more for these than I could the pink Converse. That's what happened. These still would have sold for $40 had I held out, but I think I sent out, I sent out offers one night and someone grabbed the offer. So uh, as it stands, a good seller and these only took three weeks to sell. All right, this is a vintage Kiss shirt from the Psycho Circus 1998 tour. Now, I don't know why this took so long to sell. I mean, maybe the graphic wasn't as desirable as some of the like higher selling shirts from that tour. And this sat for a long time. So I had this listed for uh, $65. I ended up taking an offer of $45 just because it was sitting forever. So uh, this buyer is $59.65 all in. It only cost me $0.99, cents, so who cares how long it takes. But it did take over two years to sell. And again, maybe it's just because it's the non-desirable style, graphic, whatever. You can see the comps on the screen. Some of those shirts selling for a much high dollar amount, maybe just a better graphic. I don't really know. As it stands, I had a unique shirt. I finally sold it. It doesn't take up any space because it's a small shirt. So whatever, I had to wait uh, a little while to get it sold, but it's gone. I'll take it. You've probably heard me talk, and if you haven't, I'm going to tell it to you for the first time, about the 4XLT and the 3XLT, the 3XLB sizes for certain polo shirts. Ralph Lauren comes to mind. Vineyard Vines is another example. This is a Bradley uh, Sankety shirt from Vineyard Vines. The larger sizes sell really well, and in fact, I feel like they don't produce enough of them when these come new on the Vineyard Vines website or Ralph Lauren or whoever it is you're uh, trying to purchase them from brand new. And so they tend to sell out a little bit quicker and then the secondary market kicks in and that's why you can get a price tag of $45 on this beautiful shirt, which I think they even retail for 65. So it's still a great deal. And yeah, you can find them on eBay when they finally sell out. You can't get them on the Vineyard Vines website. So this was a fantastic pickup right here. This buyer is 5411 all in. I think this cost me $4.99. I don't know if they've raised the prices of shirts. I haven't been paying attention to my receipts lately. But I think this was five bucks and it sold in six days. So it's a very fast seller. Keep your eye out for those 3XL, 4XL sizes in those brands. Uh, the Edgar Town Polo for Vineyard Vines, that one is another one that you're going to want to pay attention to. But this was a fantastic sale. I'll take it. I had the ability to test this speaker. And so when I sourced it in store, that's all that was. It was just this one Bose speaker. There wasn't a left speaker. This is the 201 Series 4. And so I was able to test this at home, luckily, and it sounds flawless. It works perfect. So uh, I gave a really good deal on this one as well. I feel like even just for single speakers, one side, you could probably get 40 to $50 for just the individual one, depending on, you know, how bad someone needs it. But I'll take the 30 bucks. This buyer is $48.98 all in. It only sold in six days. So I priced this one aggressively. You hear me talk about pricing on the high end for a lot of my items. This was one of the ones where I wanted to be really aggressive because I didn't want to sit on just one speaker for a long time. And boom, the strategy worked. I still don't know how to pronounce this and I was too lazy to look it up. Is it Yves? Y yes, St. Laurent? I don't know. Someone's going to have to correct me in the comments and I know someone's going to come through. At any rate, this is the second cosmetic bag from this brand that I've sold uh, in the last, I think, 30 to 45 days. The last one I sold, I got 25 bucks for, and this one I got $30 for, and I found both of them at the Goodwill bins. So this is a fantastic pickup. It's like a velvety satin kind of feel to it. And uh, the buyer is 36, 36 all in. I mean, maybe a quarter of this cost me because it is insanely light and it only took five days to sell. So it was a very fast seller. I've actually seen, and you'll see it as well, in the sold comparables, someone just sold one of their bags, the same exact bag for 50 bucks. So I want to be like them when I grow up. That's my kind of pricing. I thought 30 bucks was fair, but now you know you can probably get 50 for this if you see it. This is a great pickup at the bins because you pay by the pound. It's next to nothing. And this is a brand that is sought after, obviously for perfumes. So the cosmetic bags is like a perfect complement to those wonderful sale. Keep your eye out for cosmetic bags, especially from this brand. I'm not going to try to pronounce it again. I am full force into Halloween sourcing right now, as you will see towards the end of this video after the bolos. But this candle was a pre-owned candle and still sold for a great price. So I sourced this at a Goodwill. It was either $4 or $5. It was usually what I'm paying for candles in these locations. But because it was Halloween, because it had a cool label to it and it was a desirable scent, I knew this would eventually sell. And I was pretty confident that it would sell 
prior to Halloween, like leading up to the months that are a little bit more obvious, like, okay, it's going to sell in September. I, I felt like it would sell sooner than that, and it did. So $25.49, this buyer is $38.85 all in. It only took two months to sell. It was a beautiful scent. I would love to have kept it, but I'm a seller at heart. I like to move product, so I don't keep anything. But I am like 100% sourcing hard for Halloween because I expect my July is going to be a little bit slower, even though there is no such thing as a summer slowdown. I've been saying that for years. I just, the way I source, the items that I source, the style and the time I put in, I just, July ends up being a little bit of a slower month. We have tons of birthdays to celebrate, so I'm not working as much and that contributes to my slowness, not because the world is falling apart and all of these other excuses you hear people use about summer slowdowns. Um, it doesn't exist, but I'm hitting it hard and the strategy is working. Nothing special about a Bud Light beer tap, right? I got 12 bucks for this, but I bought a box of maybe 25 to 30 of them for $17. And this is one of the last to sell. I only have one or two left. I did, I think over $300 in gross sales from that box. So that was a fantastic sale. What I'll tell you is, when you're at garage sales or estate sales, really focus on beer taps if you see, beer tap handles if you see them, because there are so many that sell. It's, you know, both a utility function and I think people collect them as well. So there are some comps that I'm gonna put on the screen and there's actually a Budweiser one, the Budman, that you really wanna keep your eye out for if you're out tearing through people's garages, but just them in general. There's some knobs that are like, they're like circular shaped. Those go for two, $300. There's some that are like gold or bronze that are over $1,000. They sell incredibly well and there's a huge use for them and a big collector's market for them as well. So 12 bucks, you know, no big deal. This buyer is 27.55 all in. I mean, it cost me like 50 cents to a dollar. And uh, this one sold relatively quickly. It sold in about a month. So keep your eye out for beer tap handles. Very timely sale on this pair of shoes. The Golden State Warriors won the NBA championship. And then the following morning, these shoes sold. Thank goodness. So I only had them for four months. It wasn't like I was carrying them for a long time. They're Steph Curry Under Armour ones. And um, I got 50 bucks for them. So this buyer is 61.75 all in. They only cost me $4.39 at a Goodwill. And boy, am I glad the timing was right on these because um, they're a little bit slower of a seller and not just because I'm noticing that this one sold in four months, but I've had this pair of shoes before and I've had some curries before that sell generally slow. I don't know if that's an Under Armour thing or what, but they don't fly off the shelves like I expected them to. At any rate, I'll take the 50 bucks, especially at $4.39. I'm not really sure why this took so long to sell. I mean, maybe I had it priced a little bit too high. I had it priced at around $60, $65 and this sat forever. So Lululemon scuba hoodie, Inkwell, Green Bean, Angel Wing, some of the keywords that I used just based on previous sold comparables when I was doing this at the time. But this is also an item that took over two years to sell. I'm perplexed by that because the brand is correct. And it, again, sometimes I have a tendency to price a little bit too high. And I, that's just a, it's just part of the process, right? You're never going to get it 100% right 100% of the time. So um, at any rate, I'll take the $40. I took an offer on this one and this buyer is $57.89 all in. It only cost me five bucks. And again, two years to sell, a little bit long, but I'll take it. The previous Bolo took two years to sell. This one sold in under a day. So these are Nike React Prestos. They have a little cassette figure on the insole and I sold these like lightning fast. So I paid up for them at a Goodwill. I paid $20 for them, um, but they sold obviously with lightning speed for $99. So this buyer is $127.20 all in. Uh, I sent this off to an authenticator, eBay's authentication program, and they were authenticated and they went to the buyer. Uh, seemed like a seamless transaction. I think this is the first time that I recognized that I sold a pair of shoes that went to the authentic authentication process. And um, I didn't know they did that with shoes that were $99, but uh, as it stands, they were totally authentic. This was a great sale, especially since they sold so quickly. Keep your eye out for them. Thank goodness this sale came through. This week would have been a total disaster. So these are tailor-made rocket balls. It's an iron set. Um, it's a left-handed set. So I think that that made these a little bit more desirable than the right hands. I can't really confirm or deny that. So you golf experts are gonna have to chime in on that. But 
Uh, I knew I had something when I looked them up. So I bought this at a garage sale at a very slow garage sale day for me. In fact, I was just coming back from a Goodwill store and saw a sign on the road and pulled over and boom, just totally got lucky. So I paid $75 for this, but I also sold the bag for a hundred bucks. So total it all up. This was a fantastic sale and these sold in two days. So this buyer is $459.22 all in. Uh, an amazing sale, basically saved my entire week. I hope you enjoyed those. All right, here's my next purchase from Facebook Marketplace. So what is the Spirit Halloween Nightmare Harvester? This thing is massive. I don't know exactly how tall it goes. I have to look. But the gentleman that sold it to me said he used it, you know, for one season and uh, just never got around to putting it back up. So I paid $80 for this one. There are comps. I'll put them on the screen for you. And um, I'm not really sure. Maybe I can get 400 dollars out of this i'm not entirely sure one of the things here though you can tell this box is very very flimsy not only is it flimsy it's kind of huge like if you if you look at the size of this it's really really large so i don't know how i'm gonna ship this thing if i can frankenbox it like if i can maybe uh, get all of these things kind of consolidated and in, in, into a, uh, a box that's a little bit more of an appropriate size but this thing is flimsy and so i'm gonna i'm gonna really struggle shipping this, but I know it's possible. So maybe I can get 400 bucks out of him. But like I said, in July, I'm focusing hard on uh, October. So maybe I can make up the sales loss difference from July in, uh, in October. So interesting pickup here. Are the Goodwill employees allowed to shop on the spot in your area? Let me know about it. Brendan here, Dad Planet, The One Man Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit the like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so that you know every single time I upload a video to YouTube. That is all I have for you. I appreciate each and every one of you. And we will see you in the next video.